Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Uh, today I'm going to be doing some more casting. Um, I'm not going to be doing a live stream, however, I'm going to be doing this as a recording because uh, my internet's not been too great recently and uh, if you watch the last stream I did then you'll see that it's just not really watchable and I think as much as I want to, you know, provide a live stream where you know, it's obviously more interactive. I think at the same time, you guys actually being able to watch it, like, without any problems is probably more important. So, as a result, I'm going to do a recording. Uh, until I can eventually maybe do streams and my internet's not going to be too bad. Until then, I feel like this is kind of just what I have to do for now. But anyway, so... We have a game here, uh, Sylvan vs. Vandrian. And it's on a it's on African watering hole as you can see. Uh, Sylvan is Mongols against Vandrian who is Aztecs. And yeah, let's begin. So Mongols are obviously top tier nations, so, you know, this is going to be interesting, I think that Mongols does beat Aztecs quite convincingly, um, I mean, it beats most nations quite convincingly, so, Aztecs is no exception. And what I will say as well, um, Bandrian isn't the best aggressive player. So, him being Aztecs, like, for me, I don't know, it, it doesn't bode too well, but I guess we'll see what happens. I mean, he's building the barracks already, so he's obviously going to go for some uh, military aggression, some early raids. And to make this worthwhile, though, I would say you need to get at least one or two kills. Um, because Aztecs are very, like, reliant upon plunder. Um, like, I would say the best, uh, optimized strategy for Aztecs, honestly, is to just be raiding your opponent. Um, if, if it's, like, with a despot army, or just doing raids on the side as well, horse archer raids, etc. Um, or just raiding rares. Uh, and also just trying to get to H4. Looks like this villager is going to be forced to go back. And hopefully Sylvan can... I think Sylvan can save this. It depends on how well Banjo micros these Atoll Atolls. And there's another... There's another um, couple of Atoll Atolls here. Sylvan's uh, not got any military yet, he's gone for commerce. However, yep, he's gonna go for military now. And you can see already that Sylvan's at almost a hundred, pretty much a hundred food income. And that's only costed him five farms and obviously second city, which is just insane. Uh, Vandrian on the other side, you can see <laughs> plus 40 food income. Uh, he's getting a dock, however, which is good. Looks like Sylvan will be building the barracks, however, looks like Vandrian is going to scout it out, but I don't think he's going to be able to really do anything. He might be, he might be able to get a kill, possibly, the um, micros he's correctly. It looks like he's just going to try and delay the barracks. And, uh, get a market. Look how he has Bison here, so he will get a bit of a food boost. Once he gets a merchant there. Um, the raids continue. Yeah, he needs to do the micro risk away. I think he's, uh, I don't think he got any kills, did he? Or maybe he got one kill. No, he didn't get a single kill. Um, 
but he has at least slowed down Sylvan. Like he's used force to get a barracks. And well, that's pretty big. However, Sylvan is aging. Get a wood camp. I don't think this barracks is really needed. I don't think he even has any any units. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it was really worth building. These hot whites aren't going to be able to catch up to the um, units anyway, so. So how I like this counter that much. Um, the ruins, we do see Sylvan does have, you know, good ruins, whereas Andrian's a little bit behind, but it's not too much of a problem. This build is going to walk right past these. Uh, Battle battles, but he will discover horses at least, which with Mongols is actually pretty uh, insane because uh, Mongols do get a discount on horses already. So that's pretty insane. Bit of a late age up from Vandrian, but he is aging. Um, he does actually have water access as well. Yeah, he's, he's getting. Uh, Decent, a bit of wealth income, whereas Sylvan hasn't got a dock yet, so... Um, yeah, he just had that going for him. And he also has uh, gems as well. Getting the university... And it looks like he is uh, getting some units ready for these raids that are going to happen. You see if there's a tower going down, there's these bowmen here. So it does seem like he's prepared for uh, whatever Sylvan's going to throw at him. Honestly, I would say Sylvan could probably do with rushing this game because... I mean, he could get a dock here. Or, like, he could try and sneak a dock maybe, but... I think Vandrian's going to try and prevent him from doing so, he's getting a, a, a trireme as well as a bark, so it's going to make things difficult, it's going to make it difficult for Sylvan to get a, a dock, start getting some wealth income. A sort of raiding party from Sylvan here, I think he's going to go towards this mine which is completely um, unprotected, so he might be able to get a few kills there. And like coming down and see here oh he's already got two kills and he's forcing all these villagers to uh go inside come on another kill really oh yeah three kills not bad not bad at all and it obviously causes all this idle time as well which is not good for Vengeance. Vandrian's actually gone for Senator, which um, I think I think is actually what I do as well in this case because uh, you know that Aztecs are quite weak in the early ages until they get to gunpowder, and you know that your opponent is most likely gonna attack uh, before age four. Vandrian's going to try and get a city here, and uh, unfortunately for Sylvan, his uh, city was sort of cancelled in effect because of the border push that occurred, and he's not, he wasn't paying attention. However, he is raiding really well over here, he's going to kill quite a few of his bowmen, Vandrian's going to come in for the bribe I think. More villager kills, battle mine again. We're gonna be able to snipe some villagers if he can. Ooh, we need to get this white horse out of the way though. Ooh, unlucky. But he is getting more kills. And uh, 
Yeah, Vandrine's economy right now is just in shambles. I mean, look at this. He has zero metal income right now. I would say that this tower should have been built over here, but I guess he was expecting raids to be on the front, not on the back. He does have uh, quite a few units here now, so I think that you know, he is protected, I think, for now. Dublin's going to get a third city over here. He's going to try and get a dock as well. He needs more villagers on this dock if he wants to actually build it because especially once Vandrine notices that yeah because he's going to send this triumph over as well so it's going to make it pretty much impossible for Sylvan to get this up with just one villager building it. Did Sylvan get bison as well? I think he did. Wow. Let me just check the kills real quick. Six kills, nice. I think Vandrian didn't get a couple kills as well, so... But... And for once, Vandrian's actually... Why is he gone for it? I was going to say, for once, Vandrian's actually close to getting to Medieval Age, because, um... But... It looks like he's just gone for an extra commerce for some reason. I don't know why he's done that. But he's not even close. He isn't even capped out. He's a uh, 150 cap, so that's a bit, a bit bizarre. But I guess we'll see what happens. He trotchy from Sylvan. Yep, I think he just needs to. Because obviously he's not using water, and Bandrian's been using water this entire time. So he just needs to go for a, some land aggression. Um. I think that's the right play here. And Mongols are just very strong early on. Whereas our six, as I said, they're relatively weak. Get this merchant maybe. Come on. Nice one. And a good play to do as a uh, despot is if you if you are if your intent is to get plunder, then make sure that wealth is your lowest resource and so you can just be spamming scholars whilst raiding and um, basically you're just going to keep getting more wealth so you can have a pretty good boom even when you're despot. Oh, Vandrian, you're going to lose this. Oh, 100 wealth for Sylvan. He does garrison the uh, caravan though. It was an almost dead. Okay. Yeah, this constant raid from Sylvan is actually really making it difficult for Vandrian. Like at this point, it doesn't even matter that, that uh, Sylvan's not even using the uh, watering hole because and he's getting taxation as well, which is nice because he does need sort of like he can equal uh, Vandrian's wealth income. See. 72. He's a, he actually has more wealth income than Vandrian, even though he's not even using the C. And he has like no wealth rares, right so. I think it's um, purely based on his territory, which is actually kind of the same as Vandrian, so interesting that he has so much wealth income. Vandrian does age. He's going to try and get the city big if he can, but. And I like this play from Sylvan, he's forcing Vandrian to sort of be elsewhere whilst he is actually putting seeds to his um to his city over here, so and this is just the power of Mongols. You know, you have a very fast nation here. Yeah, this is looking really bad for Vandrian, I have to say, like because he can't he can't be in two places at once. Like he can't even be in one place right now because like they lost all his units. I'm gonna lose more economy. Yeah, this is looking really bad for Vandrian. I honestly wouldn't even be surprised if Vandrian just said GG because. And. He's just not paying it. Like, it's causing him a lot of idle time and also. Like, his units are just. Like, over here, for example, they're just not doing anything. Um. 
just get a briar claw though, so nice play. Sylvan should probably pull back now. I want to say the damage has been done. Um, well, Vengeon does have a pretty good food income, but... Ooh. This caravan is just a bit in duck right now. That's going to be like another 50 wealth of Sylvan. Um... I do expect this city to go down. Thundering, sending all his units over here. Uh, Sylvan coming back at the raiding party, even though an almost dead raiding, raiding party, but. Probably gonna get a few kills whilst Thundering's focusing over here. One. The lookout's gonna prevent this from being taken, and also the tower. Oh, okay, no, it's not been made big yet. Look at all this food income, all this food from Vandra, and he could sell some of this and buy some wood. Oh, the starter. One. I don't know why I'm right clicking here, but. Oh, come on, he's not gonna get a bribe, really? Oh, that's gonna lame. But he should get the kill, yep. 100 wealth again. I think Sylvan's probably been given, like. 300 wealth this game from just thunder <laughs> from Vandrian. So, like, it doesn't even matter that he's been using the, the C because like, Vandrian's just been giving him all the wealth income in the world. Gold of, yeah. Free plunder, so. And at this point, I don't know if Vandrian can really recover because. He's actually using, like, he has no woodworkers. And this is cool. I was gonna say, this is the, just the power of Mongols. I mean, you can have so many units early on, and. Yeah, it's hard to counter that. Now the city did get big, so that's lucky for that's good for Vandrian. Um, so it's gonna take some time for it to uh, go down. Gonna try and get a tower here as well, but it's a bit too far away from the city, I think, for it to prevent capture. And there's just yeah, there's just too many units here for Sylvan, and uh, like I don't think Vandrian can really get enough units here and. Oh my god. How many- <laughs> Can someone please tell me how many times the senator has been killed this game? Because, like, I feel like I need, like, a counter for this. Because it's definitely been killed at least three times. And I think this is probably GG, because... I don't really see any many units being built at Thundra. And yeah, GG. So, despite Silver not even using the middle, um, it looks like he didn't even need to. And that's just how strong Mongols are, like honestly. Like, and look at the kills as well. Um, if I can click on the right tab. Yeah, look at that, double the kills. Looks like we did get pretty even room bonuses as well, so there wasn't really much in it. So yeah, really nice game from Sylvan. He uh, definitely put Mongols to good use. I mean, he was raiding like this um, first city over here like really well. It's making it very difficult for Vandrian to uh, get his economy going. And yeah, just really well done. I mean, horses helped a lot as well. I mean, you know, horses with Mongo is just insane. I mean, yeah. He was just able to spam so many, um, so many knights. And obviously the, uh, the free horse arches from the stables really helped as well. 
Yeah, Mongols are just OP, honestly, so... Yeah, well played. So, let me just see. I'm gonna be back with another replay. Um... And that's the game we just casted, so I think I've casted that one as well, actually. Let me just check this one. Aztecs. Oh, this is Aztecs versus Mines. I think I have. I've casted this one as well. Let me just. Sort this boulder out real quick because I have casted some of these games. Alright, and let me just double check something as well. I think this is the game we just casted. Yep. Right. So we can pop that in as well. So that leaves me with three replays, and these ones I think are from Olek, if I remember uh, correctly. So. Let me just. Open up this one. Oh no, this is from Sylvan. Hang on. Oh yep, yeah, sorry. Have I? I feel like I've seen this game. Or maybe I haven't actually, I don't know. Um, It definitely seems familiar. I I'm just going to cast it though, because like, I'm pretty sure this is one of the games I have like casted before, but like the replay or like the the video wasn't like working properly so I did not upload it to YouTube so um yeah just forgive me if I've already casted this and it's on the channel then apologies but I'm just gonna cast it anyway. So it's um Vandrian as Spanish versus Sylvan as Koreans. Um I'm going to check out, I'm pretty sure I have casted this already on the channel. Let me just double check. Well, it seems like I have not casted this on the channel, I don't think, so I'm just going to cast it. Uh, but I've definitely already seen this game before. But, I'll pretend I haven't. <laughs> so, we do see Sylvan here, it's Koreans um, versus Vandrian Spanish, as I've already said. Um, let's look at the rares real quick, we do see Sylvan has furs, marble. Die, peacocks, and there's relics in this uh, top right corner. So, yeah, I think Sylvan does have pretty good rares. Uh, if he can control peacocks and relics as well as these rares, then I think he's 
He's got a pretty good set of rares, definitely. Um, but he doesn't have to really bother about getting marble. Uh, Vandrin, as as we can see, he has Pappy, Gems, Tobacco, his wall in this corner. So honestly, he has pretty de he has decent rares as well. So I do think that Sylvan probably has slightly better rares because um, if he can get uh, relics and peacocks, then I think perhaps uh, Sylvan has better rares, but I mean, Vandrin does have pretty good boom rares. Uh, he has four knowledge rares and three wealth rares. So that's pretty good. Whereas Sylvan has two wealth rares and uh, two knowledge rares. And also two library rares as well. So, yeah. I don't think either side has much to complain about. I think it's just going to come down to who the corner rares, basically. Well, at least this corner rare, especially. It's going to be interesting to see if Sylvan can hold on to it, or if Vandrian can raid it and use it. I guess we'll see. Uh, let's look at the ruins as well real quick. And contrary to what I expected, we do see uh, Sylvan has 500 ruins versus... Vandrian only having 310 ruin bonuses and I think that maybe Vandrian got a, a ruin before researching science 1 because I don't know it's a bit of a weird number I think I do actually remember that upon my previous viewing I did get a plus 25 wealth ruin so that would explain that and it's not like he's scouting bad as well like he has scouted pretty well but it, I think he got a bit unlucky of the ruins, where Sylvan's done pretty good, and Sylvan scouted pretty well as well. So, yeah, good job. So it looks like uh, Sylvan's aged to classical age. Uh, he did skip mill, but he's gonna get it now. Vandrian as well, skipping military. Looks like he's not got enough food for the military upgrade yet, but should be able to get it soon. Like there's a barracks coming down from Sylvan. And I'm going to see if there's going to be any militia raids from Sylvan, because militia raids are very powerful. At least, they are very good at um, like raiding the rare resources, so... But Sylvan hasn't really found any rare resources uh, in Vandrian's territory yet, so hopefully the scout will locate the. Uh... Well, it, should, it should locate the uh, the gems and possibly the happy merchant. And yeah, we do see a militia here, and there's one here as well. However, this one looks like it's just been sent. Um, towards Vandrian's second city, which uh, I don't know, Rome know what he can do there. But I'm guessing this is going to go to probably Gems once he scouts it, which he does. I think that's the best use of militia is to uh, raid the rares, honestly. I'm pretty sure you can you can convert villagers to militia um, in the um, in the unclaimed uh, ter in the unclaimed territory. Um, I don't think it has to be in your territory, but I could be mistaken. I know you can't do it in enemy territory, so there is that. And did we get some kills here? Because like I don't see any. Villagers here. Maybe he did. We'll just see how many kills Sylvan's got so far. Just one kill for now. Or oh, actually, no, that was Vandrian. So no, I don't know what happened there. 
But yep, he is going to go for gems. He's going to go for the third city here as well, as well as despotism, so... Looks like he's going to be going for some early aggression. Oh, looks like he's going to go for Pappy instead, which, uh... I guess at this point it's okay, because he's already placed down the third city, but... I think that... Could have gone for gems and then Pappy. And then placed the third city down. Just for some, like, extra border push, but... I guess it's okay. Looks like he's going to try and uh, deny this tower if he can, but there are some archers here. Sending in some militia as well, so... Maybe, but I don't think he's going to deny the tower in time. Nah, probably not. Get unlucky there. Some hoplites here from Vandrian to repel this militia away. But the, mer the merchant did survive, so... Good play. So what's the plan here then? I think uh, Sylvan's actually pretty close to getting to Medieval Age. Um, Andrew needs some more knowledge income I think. Probably needs about a minute I would say. A minute or two. Then he can age. I think Vandrian should probably get a stable, get military too. I think it's clear from just the way Sylvan's playing that he's going to be going pretty aggressive. And that's kind of what you expect from Koreans, you expect them to be aggressive. Each factory up from Sylvan, Temple as well. I'm gonna try and border push this uh, wood camp. If you took out gems as well then this wood camp would be Reduced quite a lot. And this is one of Vandrian's many weird plays. He's going for Science 2. Uh, with like no knowledge income. Like this merchant's still garrisoned and... Wait, that means he didn't even use Pappy. To get Science 2, which is a... Uh... Yeah, that's interesting. I, I guess he just forgot, but... Yeah, that's not really the kind of mistake you want to be making. And I think it's a mistake to go with Science 2 anyway. At least in this situation. I think he's going to try and get a, uh, a third city down over here. Guessing that's why this village is here. Now, this does lead this um, future caravan route to be pretty exposed. But is he going to get a third city there? Place down a metal mine. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I think he is. Yeah, this is quite a nice army from Sorbon. He is Asian as well. Um, Pretty much no units here from Vandrian. There's a couple of archers and a white horse, which is just not going to be able to repel this army. Especially since the tower's been taken down as well. But Vandrian's just too far behind. Yeah, GG, I guess. I think if he didn't go for um science and he just um aged up, then I think it would have been better. But I think the biggest one of the biggest reasons why he was not doing so well with this game was just the ruins, like Banish are very dependent upon ruins and it's one of their key strengths is to get good ruins. So if you're not getting good ruins then you know you basically it's gonna be very difficult for you. And there was one ruin here that you missed, and I think that's pretty much all the ruins left in the map. Sylvan wasn't using relics, neither was Vandrian. I think uh, Vandrian could have sneaked up for relic a relics merchant easily. I mean, he is Spanish, so that's kind of one of the things you want to do sometimes. Is if it's a really good rare, just assume that uh, your opponent doesn't know about it, and you can send a merchant there. And sometimes it's gonna get killed, but if it's a corner rare, especially when it's on their side, they're not likely to raid it 
until probably a few minutes later, I would I would estimate. Unless they know for, for sure that you're using it. Um, it is quite a sneaky play. But I have seen some people do. Um, so I would recommend it. Especially if you know the rare is there. Spanish, you can get an early merchant. Um, but anyway. Yeah, well played, Sylvan. Uh, that's another game in the back. And uh, let me just see if I can bring up another replay here. Which one did I actually cast? Right, okay. Right, so I've got two replays left. I think I do have some more that have been sent to me on Discord, so I will just... Um, I'll probably uh, record those next time. But I might do maybe one more game. Do this one. And I think this is... Yes, it's Olek. Um, I'm guessing BIR is an observer because I don't think he... Is going to be anywhere near good enough to uh, compete with Olek, but I think this might be against Surge actually. I think Olek definitely did say he had a game against Surge. But I guess we'll see what happens. Anyway, so it's Karin's versus um Bantu. So as as we've uh, established from the last game, Karin's a very aggressive nation. Um definitely one of the one of the nations to go aggressive with early on. Uh just the free militia and also get some pretty nice raids without even having to build any military units just because they get the free militia so you can easily get the um you can easily get the um the militia to raid like merchants it's just very handy we'll go over to see what um I don't think this is BIR that's playing, or maybe it is, I don't know. Wait, is he going auto explore? Or maybe it is him that's playing. So I thought this might have been Surge because. I didn't know that Olic did send me a game. That was him versus Surge, but. I guess this is a. Uh... I don't know. I'm confused. I think I don't know who this is. I don't know what's going on. Uh, we do see a market coming down. He's got three cities already. And this is the power of ban, so you can easily secure the uh, center wood here. Gonna be getting the barracks as well. And this is some interesting play from uh, from Olek here. He's choosing to go for the barracks. But then it looks like he's going to go for the city. And I do know Olek likes to um, he likes to get uh, to scout a lot, and then he places the second city. Uh, I think that's just his play. Um, I think Unpackity would be a good choice for um, whoever's, whoever's playing here. Like he's going to be getting the city. This is a nice city actually because he has some nice, he has a plus six wood here and he has um, 
Maybe even plus seven if we can get this tree. And this is like the problem with having such a late city is that you are very susceptible to these um, ancient raids here. Like if he was against like Aztecs or something then yeah he would be very far behind. And he doesn't even have a commerce yet. I'm just going to see how many ruins each player got. And he didn't even get more ruins. So... Yeah, this is going to be quite difficult for him. Like, um... Bansu play is going to age. And yeah, this isn't looking too good for Oleg here, I mean... I think he's going to keep this near gems to raid it, and he also has two militia here. I mean, two villagers here. We'll convert to militia once he ages up. Ooh, is he going to... This might die. Yeah. A good micro here from uh, the Bansu player. It is very easy to have good micro though. Like you don't even you don't need good micro to play Bansu well because because of the uh, the speed on the units. Um, twenty five percent movement uh, speed on the barracks units and villagers. You know that's a really big deal. And Five minutes and he's only just got his, his market up. This is uh, uh this is really bad. Stable here as well. actually using bison as well which is nice. Maybe using silk as well. The only thing though he hasn't actually scouted the corner as so let's see what's here. There's tobacco and all. there's also a few ruins that he's missed on either side and there's gems here which is actually a pretty big deal. If he had gems and he could really border push the uh, Korean player. And uh, it looks like Oleg's gonna be sending the merchant to gems. I just hope that he doesn't reveal his merchant because this taking a bit of a weird path. And looks like there is some militia raiding going on here. You know, oh wow, look at this. <laughs> I've like never seen this before. It's like a militia raiding party coming on here. Ooh, is that gonna ooh, just about survives. And he did force all these villagers on the caravan to go inside, so nice play. I feel like um, Alec could probably kill all these units if he um, or maybe not all the units. He might be he probably get the um, the archers, but maybe not the light horses if he gets some militia and just sort of goes around and he can sort of encircle this little raiding party here. That's just blocking his caravan route. And he needs to pay attention here. Is he gonna is, is he gonna save it? Yeah, and these um. Are we actually on stand ground here? So we're not even we're not even doing anything. These uh, white horses. Nice. He's gonna take down these hoplites. Also gonna be raiding the bison merchant. Nice one. Maybe there's still a chance for Oleg then because he's gonna be using gems, which is gonna help him. He has two white horses here. He's gonna force this little raiding party away. So he can finally start getting some uh, decent wealth income, hopefully, now. Thankfully, he does have. Um, and this gems has been helping a bit with the wealth income. And also, if he was using dye as well, he could be. Because, uh, like. 
Yeah, the Bansu player just hasn't scouted any of the corner rares, which is a pretty big deal. So... Yeah, it just looks like um, OX getting back into the game slowly. Um, I would probably say he needs to put like a tower here on this caravan route because he really just needs to get some wealth and come down. Maybe even get another market um, after he builds a city. Um, maybe start using a die as well. Yeah, we do see um fancy play. He has quite a lot of units though, like he could um put his good use. However, Ulrich is actually gonna be taking down these arches here. We're gonna get another kill as well. And uh Yeah, nice macro here from Olek. I'm gonna be going for despotism himself, so um Wait, does um Orange even have no Orange doesn't even have um a government yet. He's gonna be going for despot himself. Oh nice, right in the silk. And once the silk merchant's gone, then yeah, Orange isn't even gonna be using any um any rares, which is and uh, oh, this is a really nice, really nice tactic here. This is actually something that's done a lot in Nomad and not really so much in Standard. So it's actually quite funny to see it being used in Standard. But and this is one of the things about Koreans that I guess can be cut to, put to good use. He's making the full advantage of the fact that he's using gems and he's going to get a temple here as well. Oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this border push. Insane. Wow, what a turnaround this this game. Like, it looks really bad early on for Olek, but. He's just, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. Olek's gonna troll now, he's just gonna be placing towers down here. Oh, what a comeback, honestly. I know it's not over yet, but... Like, just the fact that he's been able to... turn this around so much. Yeah, this is crazy. And it looks like Olek is going to be able to get to Medieval Age faster than, faster than the Bouncy player as well. Yeah. Honestly, maybe this is GG because like once these two buildings go down then... Well, I don't know, maybe it's not because he has a lot of units here. And getting a siege factory up now. But I think Olek could easily just pull some militia and deal with this army, possibly. Yeah, there's actually quite a lot of units here from, um... <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, what have you say from the Banzi player? Yeah, this market's gonna go down, hopefully. And you get a nice bit of plunder here from this um Miss Barracks. Almost Ooh, come on, get your death spot in range. Well he still gets 80 food, but 
think he could have got more resources if, uh, if he was in range. And yeah, this is a lot of units here from, um, from the Bantu player. But I think these two towers here is making it life difficult for him. He's going to have to rebuild his barracks uh, somewhere in the back. There's a random militia there. I think he forced them to all just uh, go inside. Nice one. That looks like the Bansi player is going to be going for H3 as well. Borsha's gonna die. Rip Borsha. They just get the um, fourth scissor here from the Banshee player. Let's upgrade these units now. When he can. Yeah, also there's a, this uh, is quite a lot of um, wealth units here from uh, the Bantu player. Three cataphracts, four archers. I'm gonna try and rebuild this keep. Yeah, and this must be super annoying for um, the Bantu player actually because he's not able to. Um, I mean, he's literally just having to defend all this time, and he's not even been raiding either, and that's one of the really big strengths of Team Bantu, is just raiding. Um, oh, is he? Oh no, he's Daspot, so he can't bribe it, but yeah, I don't know if this uh, tower's going to be able to go up, actually. Or maybe, you know, uh, maybe it will, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's going to go up. What a f this is a funny game, um, and I mean, I've just realised Olex not using wine, he isn't using die either. But I guess he's just too focused on what's going on here, so I won't be too hard on him. And yeah, the bounty player is not using any rares. This is insane. Engine metal. I bet. Probably the problem with having these towers here is that now he's gonna get some plunder from them, but I mean they did their job, he, uh, you know, he had to um, build a new stable and a new barracks. I think he's gonna go for this city now. Yeah, look at all those crossbows man, crossbows. And I'm pretty sure that um, even though the um, these archers have like an extra an extra strength um, than the crossbows, I still think crossbows are better. Yeah, this is a really nice army from the the Bantu player. And where is he? Just sent a random caravan here. Nice raids on this um, first city here. But yeah, this is a lot of units from uh, the Banshee player. Like there's Morsha being pulled. Thankfully, you got the, uh, okay, yeah, big city. This is, this is a lot of archers from, uh, from Oleg here. Plus he has all this militia. Now the only problem with this is that I feel like the Bouncy player is going to be getting a lot of um, plunder here, as you can see. He's getting a lot of wealth. So he's just going to be able to spam more uh, wealth units. And there's a... 
quite a lot of cataphracts being queued up in one stable here. But nice raids on the um, Molech here. Oh wow, he's actually gonna force the Bantu player back. This is insane. That was a lot of units from the uh, Bantu player there. <laughs> There's uh, a flaming arrow here attacking this city as well. I think Olek could probably have gone for a territory victory, maybe. Um, I mean, it is kind of difficult against Bantu, just because Bantu can just spam cities, but... I think it would have been possible. I think he's going to try and uh, capture this city here. And all these villagers, yeah, they were uh, garrisoned for quite a while, though. I'm going to speed things up a little bit. The city does go down. Now he's going to go for Great Zimbabwe. Whereas Fancy Play is going to be going for the capital. Which is a pretty big deal, actually. So maybe Olek can just keep a few unit, a couple of units here and then move the rest back because he can't afford to lose his capital here. Getting two keeps behind it. He's repairing it. Wow, what a game this has turned into. Right. Yeah, he's converting to all to militia. And these militia are just going to get mowed down from these uh, crossbows here. But there's a lot of them, so you might need to uh, move back a little bit here. And the knights are out as well on the archers, on the crossbows even. Militia pull coming from the Bansi player. Wow, what a bloodbath this is. <laughs> And if only uh, Olek had his despot here, like, because he's not been getting any plunder from these. I'm killing these units. Keep this go down. Yeah, the economy is a complete wreck for both players. Yeah, nice one. He's gonna oh, it's gonna get attrition, which uh, should prevent any moisture from being pulled. Like, I honestly don't know who's going to win this. Like, this is very close. I think Oleg might win this. Because, I don't know. Like, he, has to, like, he just has so many keeps. But it's just, gonna, it's just difficult to get out of this city. But, it's like, meanwhile, the Bansi player has been getting his economy back up as well. Same goes for Olek as well, I think.
Oh wow, yeah. Look at all these wealth units once again. Man, is this, when, is game, when is this game gonna end? This is just insane. I'm just gonna look at the kills, I mean... Yeah, looks like the bounty player does have more kills. Wow, look at this army. Oh, extra spamming uh, towers here. <laughs> Putting that Korean power to good use. I might be able to snipe this death part, actually. Oh, nice. Yep, he does snipe the uh, death part. And he's actually here to receive some plunder this time. Yeah, that's a very big army, that. But it looks like Oleki is trying to get to Gunpowder Age. He could probably do with a castle, actually. I think he can afford a castle if he just sells some food. Maybe just, like... Just needs a bit more wealth, and he can get a castle. Getting military free and a couple hundred more food, and then he can age up to a uh, gunpowder age. Whereas the bouncy player is nowhere close, it looks like he's gonna be just going all in here. Um, I think um, if he doesn't, if he's not able to get the capital this time. And if Olek ages up, then I think it's going to be over for him. I mean, he might be able to get enough plunder to uh, just keep spamming units and maybe get some um, tech up, but I don't know. This looks like uh, an all in play for me. He's gonna, uh, is he going to get that death spot? Yep. Death spot goes down once again. A really nice defense from Oleg, I have to say, this has been some really nice defense. Like this this army, like there's so many more units, but he's just been able to push them back like time and time after again. And maybe yeah, maybe we do see the GG. It looks like it was BIR who was playing. I thought it was um it might have been Surge, but Yeah, really nice game, like Oh wow, I've just realized, um, I think, I didn't even see that diamonds, I'm not even gonna lie, I didn't even, I didn't even see that, wow. So he wasn't using diamonds. Like honestly, if, um, if BIR just like scouted the corners, like he had such good rares, he had silk, gems, diamonds, tobacco. Wow. Yeah, he definitely had the better rares. He just didn't scout them all. But anyway, this is a really good game. Um, and really nice, really nice defense from Oleg. On honestly, like he had such a, a shaky start, and then he was just able to pull it back. So yeah, really nice, really nice play. So the game starts here. Looks like, uh, yeah, Orange did get more kills, but, and he, I think he does got a lot of plunder as well. Got more ruins as well. And surprisingly, Oleg did get more wealth, uh, collected in the end, but, I don't know if plunder actually goes into, uh, resource collection, because, BIR was just able to spam so many wealth units. I 
Anyway, that's going to conclude this game. Um, and this is going to probably conclude the, uh, the cast as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry again this wasn't an actual live stream, but because of my current situation with the internet, um, I can't actually do, I can't really stream like that well at the moment. So hopefully in, at some point I'll be able to do some good streams, but until then, um, until then, yeah, uh, feel free to send me any games as well that you might think are interesting and uh, I'll be sure to cast them. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.